Okay, this is question seven from uh, DEB's 2020 mock papers. So in this one, we have some financial maths to do. So seven part A is very straightforward. And it says Eva wants to borrow basically 60,000 at 5.6% AER and paying back annually over six years. And it does say use amortization to calculate her repayment. So we're actually good here to go straight from the formula. So remember, this formula is given in your logbook. So from this uh, question, we could say, well, what do we need for this formula? We This A is going to be our repayment amount. We have to make sure that our interest rate and our time relates well to this payment amount. And what I mean by that is her payment amount is annually. So her interest rate must be annually and her time must be annually. If her repayment amount was a mortgage, say, and it was a monthly repayment, then we need a, a monthly interest rate and a monthly time. But here we're actually going to go because she's actually going to pay it back annually and we're given the interest rate annually as well. Whenever you see a loan repayment or a mortgage repayment, you always must go to this amortization formula. And it's given to you, as I said, in the logbook. So let's see what we have. So we need um, a P, which is how much she's borrowing, which is 60,000. We need an I, which is the interest rate, always in decimal, of course. So 5.6% is 0 0.056 in decimal. And then we need a T, and T is 6. So as simple as that, then, we just literally put that in here, and we say A is equal to the first P, which is 60,000. And the I, which is going to be... 0 0.056 and then 1 plus that i which is 1 plus 0 0.056 and the time is 6 years and that's all over 1 plus that i which is 0 0.056 and that's to the t again which is to 6 and that is minus 1 so when we put all that into our calculator which I have over here we get, you should get 12,048 euros and 83 cent. So that's as easy as the first part is done. That's our answer, okay? Now, in the next part of the question, you're given a big table um, like this. So I've actually taken that table and I've drawn it out here just to make it a little bit bigger for me to do it on, right? To make it easier for you to understand. And we have to fill in this table. Now what we're asked to do is complete uh, the table below to show the repayment schedule and balance of the loan along the way each time. So we started off here at payment number three. And we say after payment number three, the new balance on the loan is 3244654. So you're given this straight away. Now, we owe, so she's, she's three years in, she's halfway through the loan and she owes this much. And we need to see what's going to happen on the loan from now on in. Well, we worked out in the last part that her annual repayment amount was 12048.83. And we also knew that the interest rate was 5.6%. Yeah. So what actually happens in a loan is this. She owes this much, she's going to now make this payment in year four. So yeah, this amount of money will come off that. But this amount, not all of it comes off. So if you've ever heard in the first couple of years of mortgage of, of your mortgage, you're, you're paying mostly interest. Well, you are always are paying some capital, but depending on what the balance on the loan is, that's how much interest you're going to be paying or how much of your payment goes towards writing down the loan and how much actually goes paying back a bit of interest. Well, we can work that out here. So. What we're going to do is we're actually going to get the interest amount on what's left. Remember, it's 5.6%. It's 5 so if we do into our calculator, 32446.54, and we get 5.6% of that, that gives us an interest amount this year owing of 1817.01 um, if we round up there. Okay? So that if that's true... And then we're actually making the payment of 12048.83. Well, not all of that's going to come off the loan. We're going to have to subtract the interest amount from that. So minus 1817.01. And that leaves us with 
231.82 actually coming off the loan. So actually not all of our payment comes off the loan. We have to include some interest. So that comes out of our payment. So what's our new balance going to be? Well, it's going to be 32.446.54 minus this amount here. And that gives us a new balance of 22.214.72. Two. And we simply repeat that process going on. So I will repeat that process because I have to say these tables can be somewhat daunting looking. So I mean it's really just to slow yourself down here in an exam and realise that what you're being asked isn't that difficult, it's more tedious. So we're now at this balance zone after four years. She's going to make this payment again. So how much interest now is owned after the fourth year? Well, we'll take that 222472 and get 5.6% of that. And 5.6% of that is now 1244.02 when we round it. So now you can see actually this time we actually have a little bit less interest owned, so slightly more is going to come off the loan. How much more? Well, we say 12048 is what the 0.83 is the payment we're making. We're going to subtract the interest from that, which is 1244.02, and that means that 10, 8, 0, 4 now is actually going to come off the balance. So you can see it's slightly more than the last time. So what's that new balance going to be? Well, it's going to be 22214.72 minus this amount here, which leaves us at 11409.91. And again, one more time. So again, we're going to be making this payment of 12048.83. So a good idea now in a video is maybe to pause it and you work out these three boxes and see what you get. So I'm going to go ahead and do it now. So let's get the interest owned on this much. So 5.6% of that is 638.95. So again, how much is going to come off the loan? Well, 12048.83 minus this interest amount, 638.95. And that means that 11, uh, three. Six three, sorry, six three eight. I put in six eight three. I was wondering there. Six three eight. So we aren't going to be down to a balance of zero. We'll be in trouble. So eleven four zero oh, nine point eight eight is what's going to come off the loan, and we can see that we have eleven four zero oh, nine point nine one remaining. Minus that, it leaves with a tiny balance of. At the end of the loan at 0 0.03. Now, why are we left with 3 cents? You might think, why did I not go down exactly? Well, it's because we were rounding up all the time or rounding to the closest penny or cent and it left a little tiny error. But I think if you've paid back the bank 60,000, they might leave you away with that 3 cent. So that's that table done. So in 7b, uh, first part, it, uh, a financial advisor says that if she had paid it monthly, she'd save money. Um, rather than paying it yearly. So she'd pay probably less interest. So let's see what, what would happen there. So the first question they say is, you have to find the 5.6% yearly amount. Is that equivalent to a 0.4551% monthly amount? Now I have actually done a video on a quick how to change this quickly. I'll do it here anyway, but if you want to see a more detailed explanation, you can check the link I'm going to put up here. So I'll go ahead and do this one anyway. So for me, it's using the compound interest formula. Okay, now what I'm going to concentrate my F and P here, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to look for a one-year equivalent, right, uh, formula here. So what I'm going to say is, can I find an F that's 5% bigger than some P? And I can easy. If I select P to be 100, I can pick an F that's 5.6% bigger. That's 105.6. That's easy to do. And then what I'll do is, because I picked one year, and I'm looking to solve for interest rate, well, I can change my T to 12 because it's going to be 12 months. So if I actually solve all this for I, I'll have the equivalent interest rate that will take 12 months to get 5.6% bigger. Essentially, that's what I'm doing. So in one or two steps, 105.6 will bring over the 100. We also want to get rid of this power to 12 here. So if it was squared, we take the square root. So now it's to the power of 12. So we take the 12th root. And that's going to be equal to then just 1 plus I on its own. And when we do all this, we take that 12th root, we have this button here, so 12 underneath the fraction, uh, 105.6 over 100 equals, and it gives us like 
1.04551 is equal to 1 plus i but of course this one comes over to be a minus and that means that 0 0.04551 is equal to i now sorry 0 0.00, 0 the zero and then that means that 0.4551 percent of course we drop two zeros bring the decimal place over twice to be a percentage and that's what we were asked to do so that's pretty straightforward as i said check the link if you're unsure about that to do because it's something you, there's a good chance if you get a financial math especially a loan question you'll be switching between monthly and yearly okay now the next part says that actually calculate that monthly payment amount now again this is going to be back to an amortization problem so if you remember in the first part the amortization formula looked like this here I said any loan or mortgage repayments will be using this amortization formula so if we look at what we have here it's this a p i and a t so our a is the amount so let's look at this question it says uh, what's the monthly payment going to be well we know it's six years and that's from the first part so six years now gives us 72 months and we have to change we spoke before in other previous videos about making sure your interest rate and your time matches so six years we have to since we're using the monthly interest rate and the monthly payment we must change the months we know i from the last question is now equal to 0 0.004551 and we know that uh, sorry the amount of money that she's borrowing p is going to be equal to 60,000 so filling in this formula here with these figures p being 60,000 okay and now we have i our first i point zero zero you know what i'm going to just move this down here so a is equal to 60,000 now our first interest amount point zero zero four five five one that's our i and then one plus that same i point zero zero four five five one and that's to the time which is now 72 and that's all over one plus point zero zero four five five one and again that's to the time and now we're going to subtract a one so we put all this into our calculator and see what we get so i mean putting all this into calculator in one go is a real pitfall for students i tell you how you might make it a bit easier do the top line first in your calculator like this exactly like it's written here and then when you get an answer do your answer divide it by and then in brackets this line so it might be easier so i'll try it and see what i get right so sixty thousand bracket point zero zero four five five one and another bracket one plus point zero zero four five five one and that's to the power of 72 so it equals and i get an answer and then i'm going to press divide i'm going to open a bracket and do oh, i actually opened two brackets there so one point zero zero four five five one and i close the first the second bracket put it to the power of 72 and then minus one and then close the final bracket let's see what we get so when i do all that i actually get nine seven nine point one eight when i run to some places so that's actually our monthly uh, repayment so if you you need to try this and you need to make sure you're getting this right so whatever way you want to do in your calculator is fine but definitely take out your calculator now and try this to get to that please and see that you get this number here okay so on to the next part it asks us how much could she save by repaying monthly so we figured out from part a that she had to make six annual payments of this much so six multiplied by 12.04 sorry six multiplied by 12.048.83 so that's total repayments altogether of 72.292.98 then we just in the, in the last part we would say that it required 72 monthly payments of 979 so 72 multiplied by 979 Point one eight gives us seventy thousand five hundred point nine six. Okay, so what's the saving? Well, the saving simply is 
one minus the other. So our saving is going to be 72, 292 by 98 minus the other one, giving us a saving of 1792.02. So this is how much you could save. Okay, that was a pretty easy one. So on to the next part where Eva's family have kindly offered an interest free loan of 60,000. Very nice. She saves X amount per month at 0.2% monthly for four years where the first payment is due at the end of the month. So we need to see how much she actually has to put away per month earn this much interest to make sure she has 60,000 at the end of four years. This is a geometric series installment type plan. And I've done a video for which I'll put a link to up here. So have a look at that if you'd like a more detailed explanation. But you might get it here. So I'm going to be using the compound interest uh, formula to think about each payment that she has to make. Okay, so if we think about the first payment or say the final value of payment one, so, well the final value of payment one is gonna be some amount of money she puts in X. That's gonna be earning this much interest, 1.002, or that's one plus the point zero zero two in there. 1.002 for how long? Well, if it goes in at the end of the first month and it's there for 48 months in total, our total thing is up for, but one month is gone, that means it's in there for 47 months. Now we go to the next payment she comes in. The next little X that's on its own little journey again. That's 1.002, which is 1 plus 0 0.002, not to forget. It's in there for 46 months. So on, so on, till she gets to the very last payment. Now, if she needs to make 48 payments, and her first payment wasn't in until the end of month one, that means her final payment, right? Her final installment, if you like. How long is that in there for? Well, that X is going to be in there for 1.002, but it's going to go in there in the last day, so no time at all, so zero. Effectively, this is gone, and we're just left with an X. So we have all these terms here. So an X times 47, 46, 45, so on down to the final X. So that means the second last payment, if you like, is in there for one month. So how can these be represented as a geometric uh, series? Well, let's think about it. The very first payment, X, is in there for now actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to write the last payment first again since addition is commutative we can write it in any direction for instance four plus two is the same as two plus four so let's write the final payment in there first because we're just adding all these things together so if you remember what i said the second last payment would be the second last payment was in there for one month and then so on so on till the first to the first two payments so look at the first two payments well the second payment was x times 1.002 to the 46 and the first payment being x 1.002 to the 47 all this stuff has to come out to be 60,000 okay this is where we're looking for this series but of course we have an x in there now you can go ahead and solve the geometric series with an x and have a variable but i'm going to show you the way i'd like to do it i'll actually factor out the x from each of these terms on the left hand side so x outside in square brackets. What's the first one going to be now? 1. x times 1 is x. Plus 1.002 to the 1. So on. Up to 1.002 to the 46. Plus 1.002 to the 47. And again, all this stuff needs to be equal to 60,000. When you do it like this, this is the only thing you're dealing with for a geometric series. And we can do it like this. So don't forget our geometric series formula is Sn is equal to A1 minus R to the N over A1 minus R. So if we look inside the square brackets, A being our first term is 1. R being our ratio. So what you multiply 1 by to get to 1.002? Well, it's 1.002. And of course, if you multiply that by 1.002 again, we get 1.002 squared, which is the next term. So, so on, so on, the ratio is 1.002. How many terms are there? Well, you might be fooled in thinking there's 47 terms, but if you look, the very first term is included here. The second term has a one, the third term has a two. There still is 48 terms, okay? So that means for this series here, we will have an A of one, 
we'll have 1 minus the ratio to the power of 48 all over 1 minus r. So if we do all that stuff in our calculator, and of course r again being 1.002. So if we put this into our calculator, what do we get? Well, we can disregard this 1, so we can do 1 minus 1.002, and that's to the power of 48 over 1 minus 1.002, and that gives us like 50 point three three if we round it up okay so that means that inside these square brackets is this number so x times this stuff is equal to sixty thousand so we can write that x sorry times fifty point three three is equal to sixty thousand which means that x must be equal to sixty thousand over that fifty point three three and if we do that we do 60, 1, 2, 3, divided by my last answer, I get 1192.21. That's it. So as I said, I put a link there a few minutes ago. If you don't understand this method, I guarantee it. Actually, I'm sorry, it's a little bit messy here, but I tried to do it. This question is particularly long. So if you want to have a look at the other video, go back and have a look at it. But 11, try and do this yourself and see can you get to this answer. So in this last part, it says that she failed to consider a dirt tax of 33%. So if you remember, in her installment savings plan, she had a 0.2% um, interest rate for, that was accruing on her payments. But they're going to take 33% away of that. So if we have to take 33% of 0.2%, what are we left with? So I suppose the way I would think of it is, if you take 33% of some amount, you're left with, what, 67% of it? So 100 minus 33 is equal to 67%, yeah? So effectively, it might be easier to think of this. I have to get 67% of 0.2%. Now, that might sound real difficult, but it's, it's not too bad, right? Let's write this first as a decimal, 0 0.002. And let's get 67% of that interest rate. Well, you just would multiply that by 0.67, okay? So... 0 0.002 multiplied by 0 0.67 leaves us with a new interest rate of 0 0.00134, which of course that implies a 0.134% rate. Now I just wrote that just to help you understand that we've gone down interest rate, but I would never use 0.134, the percentage inside it. So that may be tricky to think about, but I suppose if you think about this, what's 50% of 50%? That'd be 25%, it would be half percent, half of 50%. So we're looking for 67% of 0.2%, which gives us this. So I hope that makes sense. It certainly is very hard to explain in words. So look, 0.134% is our new interest rate. So now actually we're going back to our previous question sequence. So if you understand how I made this sequence, I'm now going to make this sequence again, but I'm going to change my 0 0.002 to 0 0.00134. So of course I have, I'm gonna go, if it's okay, I'm gonna go straight to this line here, okay? And then work out my new geometric sequence, okay? So what's that give me? So I took an X outside, if you remember, and then I said one plus, and then we're just changing our interest rate, 1.00134 to the one, all the way up to the final term, which is 1.001, three four to the forty seven and that now should be equal to sixty thousand okay so let's see what we get so again this is our series in here a one minus r to the n over one minus r okay so a being our first term which again is one our new ratio now being one point zero zero one three four and our n still being 48. So I've only changed one thing, which is this. So let's put this in and see what we get. So that gives us an a of 1, which isn't going to do anything. 1 minus the ratio, 1.00134 to the n, which is 48, over 1 minus 1.00134. When we do all that on our calculator, let's see what we get. We get uh, 1 minus... 
1.00134. I don't know, I know my calculator is terrible, and I unfortunately during this time of quarantine, I've left my decent calculators on my desk in school, so you'll have to just go with me here. But one minus, I put this in brackets like I have here, not to make any mistakes. It's important if you're getting it wrong, that could be a problem that you have. So 1 minus 1.00134 on the bottom. So when I do all that, I get a value roughly equivalent to 49.543. I'll go with that, right? So that means that when I look at this sequence here, I have x times this stuff. And then we know this stuff is equal to 46.543. So x times 46.543. Four, three is equal to now 60,000. So our new x is going to be 60,000 over 46.543. So 60,000 divided by my last answer gives me a new payment of 1211.07. So it said what other payment increased by. Look at the last payment we got was 1192 and 1211. So our increase is going to be this. It's going to be this minus 1192.21. So 1211.07 minus 1192.21 gives us an increase of 1886. And if I look at the question, I think eventually that's it. That was a long one.